friends, Miss Katie here to read with you today. Our first book is The Night Before Summer Camp. Twas the night before summer camp when at the town park the counselors were working till well after dark. The canoes were moored by the boat dock with care in hopes that young paddlers will soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of butterflies danced in their heads. But not everyone was happy about going to camp, especially Rick, who was the worry bird champ. In the morning, mom woke him, rise and shine, kiddo. But he pulled up the covers, I don't want to go. I don't know anyone there, I'll be gone all day. Can't I just go over to Tommy's and play? Camp is one giant playtime, mom said, so don't you stress. And it's not an overnighter. Okay, I'll try, I guess. The bus picked him up at the end of the street and dropped off the kids where the sign said to meet. There was a whole bunch of children, none that Rick knew. He felt lost and lonely. What do I do? Come join the lion cubs, said the counselor Kim, who today was teaching the kids how to swim. Kick your feet, move your arms, place your face in the water. Excellent, Rick. You swim like an otter. For the rest of the morning, the cubs explored nature trails. They saw butterfly birds, crawling bugs, snakes, and snails. They gathered up sticks and found bark to make boats, then set them a sail. Hey, look, mine really floats. When what at, their, at the edge of the lake should appear but a beautiful doe and two baby brown deer. Their eyes, how they twinkled, their bobtails so twitchy, their legs were so slender while Rick's were so itchy. Anybody starving? asked Kim. It's time to eat lunch. But Rick wasn't hungry. He missed his mom a whole bunch. Counselor Kim sat beside him and asked, are you okay? I want to go home, Rick told her. I'm kind of nervous today. Kim smiled and said, hey little cub, I'm nervous just like you. This is my very first job. I'm away from home too. Last night I tossed and turned in my bed. I couldn't get the jitters out of my head. Same here, replied Rick. I really understand. So whenever you're nervous, just hold on to my hand. It's a deal, said Kim. And thanks for the talk. Could you help me carry the jump rope and chalk? For the rest of the week, Rick had oodles of fun. There were three-legged races, which he and Kim won. He made scrapbooks and drum at the arts and craft table and starred in a play from an old Asab's fable. Day camp entered or ended on Friday. Oh, what a bummer. I want to go back for two weeks next summer. Our next book is The Sweet Treats Carnival. Hello. 
Strawberry Shortcake was very excited. The day of the Sweet Treats Carnival had arrived at last. She and her friends had been getting ready for weeks. They had each played, planned special games to play at the carnival and made sweet treats for the prizes. Wow, exclaimed Strawberry as she arrived at Huckleberry Briar where the carnival was being held. It looks just like a real carnival. Ginger and I spent all morning hanging up the balloons and streamers, Huck said proudly. Can we play my game first? It's called Go Fish. He handed everyone a fishing pole with a sticky piece of tape at the end of the line. Then the kids tried to catch paper fish in a bucket. I caught three, said Ginger Snap. I caught four, Strawberry said proudly. Rainbow beat us all, Angel Cake laughed. She's got eight. Good job, said Huck. Here's your prize, a pack of my favorite wild berry bubble gum. I caught only one fish, Blueberry Muffin said with a frown. That's okay, Strawberry replied. There are lots more games to play. You're right, Blueberry said. Let's play mine next. It's called Hot Muffin. Everyone sits in a circle and passes around this muffin. While the music plays, if you're holding the muffin when the music stops, you're out. The last person left wins a prize. The kids passed the muffin around while Blueberry played the music. When the song stopped, Rainbow Sherbert was caught holding the muffin. Huck was the next one out, followed by Strawberry, Ginger, and Orange. That meant Angel Cake was the winner. Yay, exclaimed Angel as Blueberry handed her the prize, a big bag full of blueberry jelly beans. I love jelly beans. Strawberry's game looks like fun, like berry fun, said Ginger. Can we play that next? Ab Ab-so-berry-lutely, Strawberry replied. Follow me. She led her pals to the net made of strawberry vines. Whoever throws the most strawberries through the net wins the prize. Strawberry explained as she handed out baskets of strawberries. This doesn't look too hard, Blueberry thought. Maybe I'll win this game. But after the kids finished throwing, throwing their strawberries, Huck was clearly the winner. He made a basket every single time. Yes, Huck cheered. I love basketball. Don't you mean strawberry ball? Teased Strawberry as she gave Huck a gallon of homemade strawberry ice cream for his prize. Blueberry tried to laugh with the rest of her friends, but inside she was disappointed that she hadn't won. play my game now, suggested Angel Cake. It's a cakewalk, of course. She showed her friends a path made of squares that had bright numbers painted on them. I have the secret number, she explained. The person standing on the number when the music stops is the winner. Angel Cake turned on the music and the kids jumped, hopped, and skipped around the path. Suddenly the music stopped and everyone froze on a different square. The secret number is 10, Angel announced. Blueberry looked down she was standing on nine. That's me, I won, cried Ginger next to her. Yay for Ginger, Angel cried. Your prize is a tray of my very best vanilla cupcakes with lots of sprinkles, of course. Angel's cup cupcakes are very yummy, Blueberry thought sadly. I wish I had won them. Would you like to play my game? Orange Blossom asked shyly. She showed her friends a glass jar filled with tiny flowers. Whoever guesses the right number of orange blossoms gets the prize. I'm very good at guessing, thought Blueberry. 50, she yelled excitedly. I guess 46, said Strawberry. 75, Huck, Huck called out. There are 45 orange blossoms in the jar, Orange said. That makes Strawberry the winner. I was so close, Blueberry thought sadly, but I still didn't win. Here's your prize, Strawberry, Orange said as she handed her friend a bunch of orange flavored lollipops. Mmm, Strawberry said. Thank you, I can't wait to have one. The kids pl played Ginger Snap's game next. She showed them several pyramids of milk bottles, then handed everyone a bean bag. Whoever knocks down the most milk bottles wins, Ginger said. Blueberry squinted at her pyramid of milk bottles. 
She aimed her bean bag at the center bottle and threw it as hard as she could, but it flew a little too high and knocked down, only knocked down the top bottle. As she sighed, Blueberry heard a loud crash. Orange Blossom had knocked down all of her milk bottles with one throw. Way to go, Huck said. You have great aim, Orange. I do? asked Orange, surprised. You sure do, Ginger replied as she handed Orange her prize, a tray of sweetly spiced ginger cookies. Rainbow Sherbert's game was the last one. Blueberry held her breath as she watched Rainbow set up the large pole for playing ring toss. I just have to win this one, she thought. Ring toss is one of my very favorite games. Strawberry said as Rainbow passed out the rainbow colored rings. One by one, the kids tried to throw the rings around the pole. Strawberry didn't miss a single one. Strawberry is the winner, Rainbow declared as she gave Strawberry a cone of fluffy cotton candy. Thank you, Rainbow, exclaimed Strawberry. I love Blueberry. What's wrong? Why are you crying? I didn't win a single game, sobbed Blueberry. I'm just a big loser. Strawberry ran over to Blueberry and gave her a big hug. Don't be silly, she cried. You're not a loser at all. You played fairly and were happy for your friends when they won. That makes you a great friend, not a loser. She gave Blueberry some cotton candy and a lollipop. The rest of the kids shared their treats too. Besides, most of the games were based on luck, added Huck. Anybody could have won or lost. That's true, Blueberry said with a smile. And even if I didn't win today, I'm still pretty lucky because I have the very best friends ever. Now, for our project today, we are going to make our own ice cream. For today's project, we're gonna make our own ice cream. You need a quart size bag, gallon size bag, ice, ice cream salt or rock salt, it's the same thing, heavy whipping cream, vanilla, you could also use chocolate syrup if you want, it's up to you, and what kind of ice cream flavor you want. And then we have a bunch of toppings for when our ice cream is ready. All right. Do you have the recipe? All right. What ingredients do we need? How much cream? Cream. A little bit. Whipping. Half a cup. Half a cup. You might want to scoop those. All right, go ahead and pour half a cup. You also need sugar. I don't want to forget that. Should I pour it in here? Pour it in this bag after I have two hands on it. After I have two hands. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'll just set it down. I was going to take it away, but so I'm already in it. Okay. Now we need a tablespoon of sugar. We have our table. It's, it's fine. It's okay. Just trying to get salt goes in the bag or in bag of dice mm -hmm. okay. and then a couple drops one two three oh, that's plenty plenty okay read it for me when it says close it it says make sure it's mm -hmm. sealed sealed tightly no leaks. No leaks. Okay, next step. 
before you do that, make sure you have something. Fill it. Fill it with ice. 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 Ice.
I hope you had lots of fun making your ice cream. Feel free to let me know how it turned out. I also want to give a very special happy birthday shout out to Jonah. If you have a shout out you'd like me to give you for a birthday or anything else, even if your birthday already happened, let me know and I'll give you a shout out on another video. Until next time, so long for now to you, my friends. So long, farewell until we meet again.